But uh, this is a poem about London. I come from, I come from London. I, like most people who have any experience of London, uh, you know, every, it's impossible not to have ambivalent feelings towards it. Um, but it's also the city without which I wouldn't exist. None of my parents are from London. My dad's from Devon. My mum's from Indonesia. They met in a disco in Leicester Square the week before she was going to return to Indonesia. So, you know, only in London. Um, uh, and when I was thinking about this poem, writing about the city, reimagining it, one of the things about London is that it's so huge, it's like multiple cities, and it's also very interconnected. You can get anywhere very quickly. So you have this sense constantly of both the kind of vastness of space, but also how close you are to people you love at any one point, or very far and very near. And that was kind of what I wanted to get across. Half got out. I was reading a poem by Ben Johnson, where a newborn, half got out, sees the city burning and decides to crawl back into its mother's womb. Thine urn, he calls it. It was Tuesday morning. I'd just seen Leo near Leicester Square. He was reading a book by W.S. Merwin, a poet himself newly returned to his dead mother's womb. I was feeling so anxious, Leo said, kind of low. When I started to read it, it felt like I found it at just the right time. I'm not sure. But don't parents always talk about their children arriving at just the right time? Like you might describe finding your flip flops just before a beach holiday. Yes, I said to Leo. He wrote that poem, didn't he? That sad dad poem that starts. My friend says I was not a good son. You understand? I say yes. I understand. He says, I did not go to see my parents very often, you know. And I say, yes, I know. I love the way the dialogue loops back in on itself. The way you know the poet is really talking to or about themselves. It hurts to read it. It reminds me I could be seeing my parents right now, who live ten stops away. Yes, half an hour. But I'm not. And what else am I not doing, knowing, really knowing, from my top down to my toes, from who's born if they'll not return? You have to work, though. You have to make a living, don't you? That may be true, I don't know. I left the library in light rain to meet Linda for a drink at the channels. And she told me her granddad used to go to Richmond Park to fish. He was a wireless operating sergeant during the war. It's not like she cares. It's just funny, you know. Even if she had a Victoria Cross tape to her forehead, it wouldn't stop those dickheads at the bar from asking if she's Latino or something. I fucking hate this city, you understand? I say yes, I understand. But I don't know how to leave. I say yes, I know. I mean, sorry, I don't know. I don't know how to leave. Or where I need to go. I looked back to enter the tube at Leicester Square, stepping over the body of a homeless man, to travel further again from my mother's womb, to turn my blame. The word interred, echoing in my head. How many acres of earth were there above me then? The whole city might have been burning. I could already have been dead. There's no going back, my dad said. But how many times have I crossed the point of no return only to crawl back down King Street or Goldhawk Road to eat chicken noodle soup and talk about seat cushions and little? Yes, I know they're good value. Thank you for dinner. Thank you. Half got out and half in wound. I know that's just the way it is. I understand the tube threading me like a complex stitch beneath and through the city, back to the house we've been sharing lately. When I got in, I said, I'm home. And you said, yes, I know. And then you filled the kettle and sat down next to me and said, I don't know how to make it, like, you know, I don't think much about into 
Indonesia, which is the country of my mom's birth. It's about language and how the language uh, makes us. And I'm going to read from one poem, which is called All the Birds of Your Husband. And it's kind of a poem about grieving and loss and the way that grief kind of warps your sense of reality. And I'm just going to read the whole bits from it. One, one day, I heard a woman started writing poems to a friend with cancer. Not to comfort, but to mock him. And when he died, she wrote poems to his wife, mocked her too. She told her that the birds in her garden were him, her husband. So she would sit outside and feed them stale crumbs until they flapped away. And then she raged. Strange things started happening. The lights blew, strings snapped on an unused harp. She shouted at the new birds. One of them flew straight into her room, shitting, screaming. What of the poem? She scolded the wife in her most mocking poem yet. No. All the birds to your husband. As Chinatown in Jackson Heights is really town sized, more China like than China, whose steamed buns assume, whose waving kitties assume. Nothing, not with me. So with Liverpool's Chinese lanterns. Tree tangled knots of them dangling freely outside each man. They make me think of you. They are not light, but light posted, shaking. She, maybe he, already four years dead, no heraldry to brag of, and no body. In here is her. Her in here's to here. To its clear statement of fact, I see her beckoned near and nearer here in us.